Today you will learn how to host your very own website for free. First, navigate to the Raspberry Pi website to download the Raspberry Pi Imager in order to install the operating system on your micro SD card. Once downloaded, install the Imager and then select the operating system you want to use. You can use any of the pre installed options, but we recommend using the light version of the Raspberry Pi OS uh, for this server instance. You also want to make sure you select the right storage, that would be the micro SD card. Be careful not to select any other USB cards or external hard drives that may be connected to your computer. After it's complete, you may have to unplug and plug the drive back in, but then you should find it listed in your file explorer. Access that micro SD card and create an empty file on it named SSH with no file extension and no information in the file. This will give us remote access to the Pi once we plug it in. Confirm that the file is there, and then you may eject the, SS, the micro SD card and move on to the next step. Once that's complete, plug your Pi in, connect the ethernet cable, put the micro SD card inside of it, and let it boot up. We will then connect remotely to the Raspberry Pi using Windows PowerShell, which you can access by right-clicking on the Windows icon in the lower left corner of your screen. And we will enter the command ssh pi at raspberrypi.local to connect. Say yes when it asks you to confirm, and then type in the default password, which is raspberry. Make note of the local IP of the machine when connecting because we'll need that later. First, we're going to update and upgrade the operating system using sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Hit enter to confirm yes, and the update will commence. Next, we're going to install the web server software with sudo apt install apache2 php. Finally, we will enable and activate the web server with sudo systemctl dash dash now enable apache2. Now our web server should be active and we can check it by going into our browser and entering the IP address of our local Raspberry Pi. We should see the default page of the web server. Success! Now let's make it so it's easier to modify the content on our web server. First, we'll enter sudo user mod dash a capital G www dash data pi. This will add us to the web server group so that we can add files to the folder. We'll also modify the default permissions on the web directory. So anything we add to it will be visible from our website and we'll add secure permissions to it. Once that's complete, we're done in the terminal and we can close it down. From here on, we'll use FileZilla FTP client. You could download it at FileZilla's website. This will make it extremely easy to update and manage the files on our website. Once we download it, we'll open FileZilla, create a new site, make sure the protocol is SFTP. The host will be the IP address that you found when connecting to the Pi, port 22, and the same credentials we used before, Pi and password Raspberry. Accept the fingerprint as we did before, and then we will navigate to the remote folder slash var slash www slash html where the website files are hosted. We can then upload our own website information or any files we may wish. I have one uh, set up already that we can check, and then we can refresh the page and see that our awesome website is now visible. This is fantastic for showing your friends who come over or your mom or your dad, but it will not be accessible from the outside world unless you update your router settings. Forward port 80 to the local IP address of your Raspberry Pi, and it will be accessible from anyone who has your external IP address. For all the commands listed in this video and more information, you can go to the link in the description for the complete walkthrough and tutorial. Thank you for watching.